There were these names that God gave his people so that they would know him by these names. And each one of these names are part of his character. And he, every time he gave a name, it was always an event. There was something that happened, and he said, from now on, I want you to know me as this name. Why? Because I, I did this for you, and, and that was a, a show of my character and my nature, and I want you to know that's who I will be to you. So start calling me this. And so, and you've heard most of them. You know many of them anyway. But, and we know several of them that we go through. But there were actually 16 of them that he gave us. The first one was Jehovah, and I'm going to say these in, you know, anglicized, they would say. Jehovah Elohim, which is the eternal creator. We know that. We agree with that. And there's others. El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough, which is always good to remember. But these are Jehovah names. So there was one, Adonai Jehovah, which literally meant the Lord is our sovereign master. That's what we need to remember. We kind of forget that sometimes. Another one that everybody knows, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. See, if we know that and we dwell upon that, we meditate upon that, we realize that he's always our provider. So we don't have to worry and you know, what are we going to do about the bills? What are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about you know, He's our provider. The Lord will provide. And you realize that whenever he was given that name, they, they were led right up to the point where Abraham had to raise his hand with a knife. If you think about this, I mean, just a few seconds, and that boy would have been dead. But he climbed, and some people say he was between the age of 13 and even up into, some people even say up to 35. Now, to me, it, it would appear more around 17, maybe 30, somewhere between 17 and about 22. But either way, Abraham was an old man. Now think about this. Isaac could have ran, right? And outran him probably. He had to have faith in his dad's God. He had, he had so much faith in his father and his father had faith in God that he was willing to climb up on top of that thing and be ready to be sacrificed. And then God provided instead, but it came at the last second. Most people don't wait to the last second. They quit too soon. Another one, everybody knows, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is our banner. And it means that in battle, he's our banner. He's who we rally to. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. He, he, he says, this is who I will be to you. I will be the God who is your healer. That's, that's how I want you to see me. I will be the, the God to you who is your provider. He has all of them. Jehovah Shalom, the God who is our peace. And we, you can tie all of these together, and I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to run through them quick. Jehovah Sid Kenu, the Lord who is our righteousness. He's our righteousness. Not, not how good you do something, but how good he did something. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies. See, people forget that. See, people forget it because they go, because now we know God is love. And they think love has no need of an army. Love has no need of strength. But let me tell you, if you're going to love, it requires strength to love. Now, it, it does require strength to love God, not near as much because he's so good. But it definitely requires strength to stand in that love, to believe in that love, and believe in the love that he has given to us. There has to be strength in that, and he is the, our strength in that sense. Then there's also, when you try to love other people, you definitely need strength when, if you're going to love other people. God will strengthen you to do it. Jehovah, Shema, the Lord who is always present. See, that's another thing people need to remember. Your Lord is always present. He's always with you. He doesn't come and go. He hadn't left you. He didn't leave you an orphan. He's always with you. And if he's always with you, then the power to heal is always present. The power to deliver is always present. He's present in you. You don't have to get a hold of someone to get help. He's with you. He said, but Curry, you don't know. You don't know my life. You don't know, you don't know it. None of that matters. All that matters, the only reason 
most people don't know that God will deliver them through their own prayers is because they don't spend enough time with him, either with him or in his word. You cannot stay in the word and stay full of doubt and unbelief. It is impossible. Unless, of course, I guess somebody taught you that it didn't mean what it said. But you have to realize he is also Jehovah Elyon, the Lord Most High, Jehovah Rohi, the Lord who is our shepherd, Jehovah Elohenu, which is, and in these last three, I want to tell you, it's strange because only one thing changes. Jehovah Elohenu is the Lord, our God. Jehovah Elohika is the Lord, thy God. And Jehovah Elohe is the Lord, my God. But now notice, our God, your God, my God. I mean, he just really breaks it down for all of us. Now, we, as I said, we know that God is love. And in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, then 16 through 19, it actually talks about believing the love that he's given us. If you don't believe in that love, it says we have known and believed in the love that God has given toward us. You can know it, you can know about it, but it's not enough to know about it. You have to believe it. And when you believe in that love, then at the moment you believe in that love. See, everybody preaches love, and a lot of people want to believe in love. But you have to realize that God is love. And so to believe his love, the minute you believe that he, his love for you, the minute you really believe in that, you'll realize he is all of these to you. He is whatever you need him to be at that moment, whatever you're going through. 